like about it that like I say give it really weird properties. Now when you let a current collapse it actually has a resistance to that change and that resistance of change it's called inductive reactance incidentally is um, one of the fundamental things about this that is super super interesting. Now when we have two coils we have a transformer when we have one coil and it's just on one core, it's called an inductor. And that reactance is actually what prevents alternate current from passing through an inductor. So an inductor will allow DC current through it, but blocks AC current. It does make you think, how on earth does that work then? So this is effectively two inductors, why is it blocked? Well, it is in one of them. But the other one isn't actually connected to anything, so the current drives through that, which is why a transformer is very, very useful. Now, let's have a close-up of a couple of experiments to help demonstrate what I mean and where I'm going with this. OK, so what I've got here is a really simple setup. These, incidentally, are 220-volt transformers. They're 220 volts to 12 volts. And I've just connected one side to the mains and the other side, which is the 12-volt output, to this little lamp. It's a car lamp actually, so it runs on 12 volts. Now it's meant to run on DC, but it'll run just fine on its AC. And if I plug that in, no surprise, the lamp lights, which is, you know, what it's supposed to do. And that's using that as a transformer. Now if I take another one and just take this side of it and we interrupt that, Now what we've got, obviously, is, an is a transformer with an inductor in series. Because remember, a transformer is basically two inductors, one on top of each other. Now if I plug that in, how about that? Nothing at all. And it's nothing at all because that inductor is acting as a filter for the AC. If I put DC in there, it just passed through fine. But the alternate current is being blocked by the inductor and the inductive reactants. However, something really cool happens if I just short that wire. The lamp lights again. And you've got to ask yourself, why is that? Because I've shorted the other coil. Well, when it's collapsing, it's actually driving a current in here. And this one being shorted creates a magnetic field still in there. And that magnetic field acts to saturate the core and reduce the inductive reactance. So if we use two of these and we connect them up, then we should be able to cancel out the AC that's been induced by the 12 volts on the other side and only put DC in it. So let's build that circuit. OK, so that's what it uh, looks like in reality, these three transformers, this being my 12 volt supply and these being my control. Now the circuit looks like this. OK, so here is it all, all laid out. That's my supply, these are my controlling transformers, there's my light, here's my resistor. And if I twiddle that resistor, I can control the light. Isn't that cool? Now we're not using this resistor to control the flow of current from the AC side of stuff. What we're doing is using it to control the strength of the magnets that we're creating here, as these are electromagnets. That magnetic field strength is what uh, controls the current going through the uh, lamp, which is why we can brighten and dim it. I mean, that's just awesome. Now that so here's the circuit laid out. Again, just a jumble of wires transformers, but there's the diodes right there. And we've got the uh, battery connected up. And if I plug that in, then again, we can use this resistor that we've got on the battery to control the current flowing through the AC side of that lamp, changing the lamp's brightness. Now this setup actually is 